Hello, my name is Karen Cooper. I work in the area of food systems, nutrition, sustainability and climate change. So today I want to share with you some information about food loss and waste and how to tackle this across the food system. So today we'll briefly cover the, the high costs of lost food, uh, why food is lost and wasted, the main foods where uh, waste and nutrients are, are lost from, the environmental impact of that food waste, and then the solution spaces uh, from agriculture to consumer. So first off, though, a quick note on terminology. So uh, food loss and waste are not quite the same thing. Uh, food losses are incurred during the food supply chain, and then food waste happens at the consumption stage, so for instance, in a restaurant or in the home. So um, we often talk about the amount of food loss and waste in the world. The statistic you're probably most uh, used to hearing is that one third of all food is lost or wasted. And if food was, uh, if food loss and waste was a country, uh, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, it would be the highest emitter after the US and China. Um, however, we don't often hear about the effects of the, the high rate of food loss and waste. So um, when we start to look at these, these impacts in a, in a more granular way, yes, we have the greenhouse gas emissions, we have the, the waste of the embedded water alongside all of that food waste as well. But also there are other impacts, such as the impact on, on farmer income when they experience losses at an agricultural level. Um, the knock-on effects, therefore, on food availability and cost. Can you imagine when there is uh, large pest losses, for instance, and what that can mean for a, a food availability in a country level. And then all of this then uh, relates to increasing inequality and undermining rural development, uh, things that are, are very, very important that we, uh, we don't uh, have a negative impact on. So um, the impacts happen across uh, the value chain, as I've mentioned, and there are many reasons why food lo is lost or wasted. There is no one single reason that we can tackle this or no one single solution that we can use to tackle it. Um, so there's also going to be a difference by geography. So some will be more important in other countries than others. So, for instance, lack of infrastructure to market uh, may be more important in, in the developing world. And... Um, other aspects such as um, pests or climate change are very difficult to tackle. So not everything is uh, potentially a solution in every country. However, there are many things that can be tackled at a local level, such as portion sizes, uh, better planning, building cooking skills. Um, and so uh, we're going to cover a few of these uh, today. But first, let's look at some of the information around uh, food loss and waste in maybe a different way to what you're used to seeing. So uh, we worked with RAP. This is the World uh, Waste Resources Action Programme in the UK. And they collect household food waste data. They build great reports on, on food losses at household uh, level. Uh, this particular data was from 2012, uh, but subsequent assessments on, on the same households uh, are similar. So it, it holds true. Um, and by weight, you can see here the biggest losses are fresh vegetables, salads, drinks and bakery. Um, but we wanted to work with them to understand the impacts beyond weight. So the nutrients lost and the environmental impact incurred. Now, all of this information is in um, a paper that we published uh, with RAP in Frontiers in Nutrition. It's called Nutrition in the Bin. So let's take a look at that data. Um, here it is for one year and normalized into what we call nutrient days per capita. So this is taken by uh, converting the foods wasted in total nutrients lost, and then you divide it by the RNI. So you normalize the nutrients lost into a more meaningful measure. Uh, by this measure, vitamin B12 is the most wasted nutrient at 160 nutrient days lost per person per year, uh, followed by vitamin C and by thiamine. Uh, we calculated that 42 daily diets are wasted per person per year in the UK if you take fibre as a limiting factor. If you take just on a pure energy basis, of course, this is uh, even higher. And then we can do a deeper dive uh, into specific nutrients of interest. So we take those that were underconsumed in the UK. Uh, these are calcium, food fiber, and fibre. And we can delve into where those losses particularly occur. So for instance, for calcium, the losses are coming from bakery, dairy and eggs, but in uh, folate and fibre, it's mostly fresh vegetables and salads and bakery. And so when you have this information, you can start to tailor where you might look to try and save some of those nutrients and try and make sure that they're consumed. Um, so we can switch now to the environmental side of household waste. So you can see here, um, the ingredients are in blue. 
And the agricultural impacts of those ingredients are the most dominant across all the five environmental indicators that you see here. Um, so uh, if you're unfamiliar, we use uh, currently five climate change you're probably used to seeing, uh, but there is also non-renewable resource depletion. So these are things that are non-renewable in the world, such as fossil fuels, also some metals. Um, uh, the ecosystem quality and land use biodiversity is all about the more general environmental impacts. And then, of course, fresh water. Um, ingredients dominate across all these five. Um, there is some difference uh, in the orange you see here, which is the preparation of the foods uh, um, in the home. And of course, you see that much more is related to, to energy use, uh, if you will do on climate change and non-renewable resource depletion. Um, so if, let's take a little deep dive into greenhouse gas emissions, because we're most used to talking about this. So on a per capita basis, it's equivalent to uh, 0.9 kilograms of CO2 equivalents per day. So that's like someone driving 2.9 kilometers uh, in a diesel car every day uh, per person. Uh, if you take on a yearly basis for the entire country of the UK, it's over 20 million tons of CO2 equivalents per year. And to use the car analogy again, this is equivalent to 6.5 million round trips across the US. So this is a, a considerable emitter. So um, we can then combine these two pieces of information, the nutritional losses uh, and the environmental impacts. And then we can start to use a heat map to understand where we might want to act. So there's no one clear winner uh, where you both impact totally uh, the environmental impact and nutritional. We look for some uh, ways where we want to make a, a combination. So for instance, if you particularly are interested in fiber or folate, there's a good environmental gain if we stop losses of those as well. If we're more interested in uh, land use um, than, uh, and climate change, specifically, maybe we look more at meat losses. So it, it can really depend on where you want to look. But these types of insights mean you can make a more targeted campaign on reduce, reduction of uh, wasting of key foods. So now we can move on to more the solution spaces. So this is just a, a selection. The, the normal solutions are, are far reaching and broad. And many of those are things that uh, nutritionists and dietitians can make a difference with as well. Um, so we can help farmers to reduce their losses um, with the use of plant science to help improve the resilience of crops so that more make it actually to harvest time. Um, this is also important, not just for the cash cropping, but also for the foods that smallholders grow for their own families. And, and so if we can help them reduce those losses, then we also help in the food nutrition security. Um, we can also support organizations that rescue field losses. So not every food that makes it to harvest time is actually harvested. And here you see an image from a food bank I visited in Mexico where they collect these losses uh, from the fields and ensure it makes it to families that need that nutrition. Uh, we can also support um, uh, the uh, reduction of spoilage. Um, so what you see here is an image from a chiller unit where they test milk, which is brought by farmers and cools it down as soon as possible uh, so that uh, it is uh, less likely to spoil uh, during the next stages of, of production. The next stage is within our own organization. So how can we get to zero waste? Uh, in our factories, uh, in our canteens. Um, there are many ways to do this, obviously through uh, initial prevention, uh, good portioning, good communication, but any losses that do incur, we can collect and make sure are used uh, in the community. Um, it's also possible to work at the consumer end. So managing uh, expectations on how fresh produce should look, what a good portion size should look like. Um, consumers can also get information at uh, a food service channel or via digital. So here you can see a project that we did uh, to communicate daily waste from one of our canteens. And this small amount of information can help someone think about losses and hopefully re uh, reduce the amount of loss that day uh, with their choices. Uh, we can also innovate with products and with recipes to help consumers enjoy leftovers and to provide uh, inspiration on what they can do with them. And of course, lastly, the use of date labels on foods is a key area to tackle. Um, helping consumers to understand uh, when food is still good to eat. So um, thank you so much for this opportunity to share about this important area of food loss and waste. I hope you have some ideas as, as to how you and nutrition, as nutritionists and dietitians can help tackle this global problem uh, and help to reduce food loss and waste. And as we all know, nutrition in the bin is no good for people and it's definitely no good for the planet. So thank you.